I have a confession to make. The other day, I was rushing off to a meeting, bag in one hand, phone in the other, trying to think about this upcoming presentation I had, when all of a sudden, I felt a familiar feeling we've all had. I was hungry. <laughs> and no, that's not my confession yet. But as I was rushing off to this meeting, I stopped to pick up a slice of pizza on the way. And as I was finishing up this delicious pizza, I took the box, I crumpled it up, and I threw it out in here, in the waste. In fact, amidst my busy rush, I barely took a moment to try and think about which one of these bins were for recycling my pizza box. And upon reflecting upon this seemingly small moment, I was shocked. Because I have every intention to be more environmentally friendly. In fact, I'm eating less meat, I'm using less plastic, I'm recycling more. In fact, I even bought this adorable coffee mug to never pollute the earth with another coffee cup again. OK, at least try. So why is it then that someone like me, and I'm sure many of you, someone who's open, willing, and ready to accept this change of being more environmentally friendly, fail at something as simple as recycling a pizza box? So this brought me to a bit of a larger question. How do we then ignite a change in our behavior? So, Today, I'm here to ignite a change in the way that you perceive and make your decisions every day. Now, before I begin, let's get something out in the open. You and I, as humans, we're actually not all that great at making decisions that are best for us in the long term. Now, to illustrate this example, I'll turn to one of our favorite subjects, math. Two plus two equals? Now, before I even finish the sentence, I'm sure the number four popped right into your head. In fact, I'll take another guess and assume we didn't need to use our fingers or pull out our calculator. The number just came to you. What we've just experienced is one of the two systems of thinking, or something we can refer to as system one or fast thinking. And fast thinking is great at getting you through all those quick things you have in your day. It's good at detecting anger in a voice, reading billboard signs, and so on, knowing which foot goes first. But fast thinking, well, it takes its shortcuts. But wait a second, I'm seeing some smiles around the room. So it looks like we're pretty comfortable with our math. Let's try one more example. 89 multiplied by 34 is? No one? Well. That's because what we're just experiencing is our second system of thinking, or something that we call slow thinking. By the way, the answer was 3,026. No one? No? And slow thinking is great at getting us through all those bigger decisions in our day. In fact, while you were trying to maybe think about that math question, I was probably drawing your attention away. And that's because system two, or slow thinking, well, it takes time and effort. But it's great at solving complex challenges in your life. For me, when I was thinking about that upcoming presentation I had, well, it was great at using my time and effort for that. Fast and slow thinking are great at getting us through all those decisions in a day. By the way, can we guess how many decisions we make in one day? from the moment we get up until the moment we go to bed. Is it 5,000? Is it 10,000? Well, in one day, on average, we make 35,000 decisions each and every day. And by the way, 226 of those are just about food. So I'm not the only one thinking about my decisions of grabbing pizza on the way. Fast and slow thinking are great at getting us through all those 35,000 things we need to do and think about in one day. But to do that, our brains, well, they take little shortcuts, little systematic errors, so that we can do all the things we need to do quickly and not get stuck on the smallest tasks, like which foot goes first. And these little shortcuts, or these little systematic errors, well, this is something that we refer to as a bias. And a bias, 
while it can really mess with how we make decisions in our long term. In fact, in 2016, the Boston University found that there were even biases in the sinful act of recycling. They found that people were less likely to recycle an item if it was distorted, such as when I crumpled up that pizza box. Now, can we take a moment to think about that? All those consequences to our very Earth due to something as simple as, uh, this doesn't look so good, I'm throwing it out. In another example, in a study we did, we found that people valued food less when they brought it home. Think back to the cucumber in the back of your fridge, the one that you bought a bit too long ago, and it's getting a little bit soggy, and it might be time to throw it out or compost it. Well, the chances of you taking this cucumber, removing the plastic and throwing it out, as it's not always recyclable, and taking the soggy cucumber and composting it, well, the chances of you doing all this, well, it gets pretty low due to something I'll just refer to as the yuck factor. So biases, well, they really mess with how we make decisions. Even if our intentions are to, for example, be more environmentally friendly, do the right thing, well, biases, we may not even realize it, but they affect how we think. Okay. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, Leora, we get it. Fast, slow thinking, we make decisions, we have biases, we all have it. What's the big deal? But in our irrational decision-making, our preconceived biases and expectations, it comes as no surprise that changing behavior, that is, changing how we make a decision, well, it can be a complex challenge. But I'm here to say, well, it doesn't always have to perceive that way. Sometimes we can represent how we make a choice. And to illustrate this, I'll share this apple. At 52 calories, this apple is a great addition for your diet. Have I convinced you to eat more apples? OK, maybe I haven't. But a study at Cornell University was trying to get kids to eat more apples. And traditionally, we'd sit the kids down and tell them, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? Because the more information, the better. Well, not always. In fact, the study took the apple, sliced it up into bits, and placed it into bags. And by doing so, well, they didn't really change much about the apple. It's still the same apple. They simply changed the type of choice these kids had. And the result? A 71% increase in consumption in apples. So rather than trying to get people to be more rational and equip them with more information, we can actually look to design the choice they have, present them with something a little bit different. Because if we want people to decide to you know, do the right thing, we need to make it easy for them to do that. And making it easy, well, that means really understanding how someone thinks, really understanding their thoughts and their feelings, and really understanding the research around what this means. And that is exactly what we did with this very recycling center at a local university. We conducted ethnographic research, which is the study of the motivations, values, principles, and behaviors related to sustainability by the students who are using this very recycling center. Because to understand how someone makes a decision, we need to understand how they assess their options, what they're thinking about. And that's exactly what we did with this very recycling center. One way we can impact decisions is through something called a nudge. Now, I've already gave a little bit of an example in the apple, where we cut it up and slice it into bits. And nudges, well, that's a soft technique we can use to nudge a specific behavior. It is the combination of analytics, psychology, behavioral insights, to create some type of a little prompt or a little activity to help people make a choice that is more aligned with their long-term goals. There are little changes in how we make a choice. In fact, there might be a nudge that you're already familiar with. Sometimes it comes right to you, and it uses the power of social comparison to compare you to that of your neighbors. Any guesses what this could be? 
Well, it's the energy bill. Many energy bills around the world are now including nudges in the very bill, which compare your energy consumption to that of your neighbors. And by doing so, when you get your energy bill, you might realize that, well, you're a little bit above average consumption compared to your neighbors. And that might help prompt you to use a little bit less energy. And that's just one way how we can alter an environment with a small prompt or a small nudge to help you make a choice that you would do that would align with your long-term goals. Because our brains, well, they take shortcuts in making decisions. So to alter behavior, we need to really understand and assess those. And to do that, well, we need to be able to look at the context around us, because context matters. The situation of how a choice is presented, along with our beliefs, helps shape how we're actually able to make decisions. When I was throwing out my pizza box, it was very much that fast-thinking brain that was looking for the easiest option to throw out my pizza box, which just happened to be the biggest bin available. My slower-thinking brain was thinking about the upcoming presentation, which is where I was putting my time and effort. Now, that's exactly how we are able to think about decisions. Because sometimes we can use fast and slow thinking to rethink an experience, redesign how we're actually able to prompt choices. And this, this is what we were able to do as we use behavioral insights to completely revamp the recycling center. Wow, what a difference. As we walk along the numbered sections, you'll notice that each of the bins are the same size. And the colors, well, they're ones that you might already be familiar with in your own recycling habits. And as I walk along to step three, the very items from that very food court are posted right up there, which makes it easy, because isn't that my pizza box up there? Which is exactly where I would throw it out before I reach the fourth and final step, landfill. No, thank you. You might even notice that some of the coffee cups go straight to the landfill. So maybe we should all have a look at those adorable coffee mugs. This experience, it's bright. It grabs your attention. It's attractive. And the words on top, we recycle, you make the difference. Words that align with our broader goal of being more environmentally friendly. So do we think this ignited a change in behavior? Did this make a difference? I'm seeing some nods, so yes, you're totally correct. But how much of a difference do you think this made? Well, we were able to divert waste from just 12% of items being thrown out in their correct and respective bins to 91% of all of the items being thrown out in their correct and respective bins and away from our landfill. And we were able to do this in just six months. Leveraging behavioral insights. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Because leveraging behavioral insights, whether it's applying small nudges to rethink decisions, such as we saw with the Apple or the energy bill, or using those behavioral insights to completely reimagine and rethink how we make a choice, well, that's actually just the beginning, and it impacts far beyond our recycling center. Not every problem requires a drastic solution. Some just need creative ways to rethink how we present a problem to make the deciding part easy. Rethinking about how you make your choices might help you notice some biases you're making, or, at the very least, help you be a little bit more environmentally friendly. Ignite a difference in the world. Some of the smallest changes can lead to some of the biggest results if we realize the power of a choice. Thank you.